let's go come in and climb up on that altar and let the Lord speak to us from now on. Everything I say isn't pure or perfect. I know that. But I believe God wants us to gather and to have a heart that just wants to get whatever we can get out of these services of life that will affect us, that will move us, that will drive us more deeply into his heart. Father, thank you for your hungry people, your failing people, your blessed people. Thank you. And I ask you, Father, to continue to not let us go, but to, um, to, to do more than stir, but to stir that which is of life in us and to bring forth with the fire a greater measure of that for your glory and your honor by Christ, Father, that you put in us the sacrifice. And you, Father, you, Father, you bring the fire on your Son in us, and we will obey and follow him. Amen. Here we have been, um, we've taken a little side thing uh, in talking about Adonai and the meaning of Adonai, that name for God, which I've never known what that was and uh, but uh, here lately last couple of months or six months or whatever the Lord has been taking us together through scriptures that related to him <clears throat> and um, and his place that could be one member of the Trinity or all three of them depending on who needs the help if you will, uh, is the one who oversees those who are going through the sufferings of Christ, who are with uh, God in the nature of Christ and Him crucified, who are um, not fighting the circumstances, but laying down their lives in the Spirit of Christ, who are bearing the Lamb's image um, in circumstances that are contrary to us or whatever. And um, we've been going over this for a while, <clears throat> um, but it kind of gave us a little detour to get into the prophets. <clears throat> and I think after tonight's class, we are about, to, we'll still be in the prophets, but we're about to get to the real point of why I got into the prophets, and that is I wanted to show you <clears throat> that there is an aspect of Adonai that I had never seen and that maybe you had never seen, and that it's very, very important that we, I'll just say it this way, that we reverence the Lord Adonai that we reverence him when we're in that corridor, when we're in that that uh, time of going through uh, the sufferings of Christ that are truly the sufferings of Christ and not just, you know, this or that. <clears throat> and, um, and, and hopefully we will get to that, begin that uh, next week. Um, Lord willing, you know how that goes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I also wanted to just say something about the sharing that's going on here. Um, uh, instead of having music, was that there has been a real <clears throat> desire on the part of many to um, really uh, press in to knowing the Lord in uh, certain ways and to breaking with certain things that are not the Lord and the, the specific names and things that we've been using in relationship to that is um, obviously becoming one with the Lamb in nature and spirit, uh, bearing His image, um, 
and the other is the, the negative response, which would be a pro-self thing that does not want to suffer or does not, is not willing to go through stuff for God or others, not necessarily because it hates God, but because it is so pro-self. And we've had quite a few people who recognize that once we started getting into it and started hearing the flow, that that might be a real issue, not just with them, but with many, many, many in the church world. <clears throat> um, so what we're, where we're at tonight is that we're in Jeremiah 27. <clears throat> and... Um, it seems like it's been a while since we've taught this class. I don't know. It just seems like it has. <laughs> for for whatever reason, I'm trying to catch you up with uh, with everything. Um, <clears throat> is that um, we have seen that God? Uh, um, you see it in the Book of Jeremiah. You see it in other places. Uh, you also see it in uh, Chronicles. I think that was one of the big mistakes I made last time. I read out of 2 Chronicles 36, uh, verse 10b through 21. And this set up, these scriptures are like a, a historical account of what we're about to read in relationship to Jeremiah, what he's dealing with. And it is that... Um, uh, the Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon are about to come down and um, we'll say about to because we're, we're talking about the full picture there, to come down and to take away captives and take away treasures uh, from Israel and really other nations too. It's not just confined to them. And, um, and Jeremiah is declaring not to fight this this king. Okay, so everybody knows that Nebuchadnezzar wasn't a good king per se. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the Babylonians were really rough people in that sense, uh, as far as warriors. Uh, and so um, Jeremiah is saying, no, I want you to to bow down to them, to, to him and to Babylon. And if they want to take you into captivity, I want you to go willingly in a certain spirit, which we would call the spirit of the lamb, uh, into that captivity. And this is all, this is, this is the book of Jeremiah. This is a whole huge portion of it. Um, uh, and, and of course, the king of of Judah and uh, all the people of God are going, no, this can't be of God. This can't be. Um, and Jeremiah is saying, it is of God. And the false prophets are saying, no, this isn't God. We should stand up and fight. Um, and uh, it, it, it prefigures Christianity. <laughs> it prefigures Christians who only see God in one way, and that is, he's here to deliver me. He's here to keep me safe. He's here to bless me. Um, but the Lord is willing, and we get this in, you know, you get that. I mean, this is the whole book of my sharing on the book of Revelation, if, in case you want to understand that book. That book is not about how bad the world's going to get and everything. That book is how there are actual people who join with the Lamb and are willing to go into death to bring forth life in the midst of a terrible situation. Ah, don't turn me off yet. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, um, here we are. Um, uh, All right, let's go to um, Jeremiah 27. We're going to read verse 1 through 11. And I'll read my little notes here in advance. <clears throat> so Nebuchadnezzar has already come once and taken away the top people out of Judah, out of the people of God, 
and some of the temple artifacts. And when I say artifacts, uh, I think they're referred to as vessels that were in the temple that they used that you, you would recognize in the tabernacle and, and, uh, and then in the greater temple that Solomon built. All the same things uh, made of gold and brass and things like that. <clears throat> Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar only sees that stuff as gold, melted down, and da 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 da. Um, but God saw it as important ministry. And I guess we'll explain that in a little bit here. So, um, <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar left the, left the rest of the land untouched. However, they yet rebelled against his rule. So this chapter takes place after the first deportation into captivity. So there were three trips that was taken where Babylon or his emissary uh, came and, and carried away captive for 70 years. And even though it's more than that, but I mean, that was what was God's plan to fulfill um, and to learn a certain spirit instead of a haughty religious spirit and um, so um, so however they yet rebelled against his rule so this chapter takes place after the first deportation into captivity <clears throat> here we have a prophecy calling for all these nations because this wasn't just something I mean Jeremiah is not even just talking to Judah um, he, he's talking to all the nations around that area and saying, look, you need to submit to the king of Babylon because God said to, and we'll find out, probably not tonight, but we'll find, and maybe we've already looked at it somewhat, scriptures that declare that God says, Nebuchadnezzar is my hand. He's my servant. I'm having him do this. But see, uh, Modern day Christianity cannot even conceive of that, which means they can't understand. You know, it's one reason why no one understands the book of Revelation. It's just confusing to them because they're going, well, and then this and then that and that. But when you see the Lamb and the purpose of the Lamb, not just the Lamb on the throne, but the Lamb in his people. Uh, you know, like, um, uh, and the beast or whatever made war with, or the dragon made war with the saints and it was given unto him to overcome them. You go, well, what the heck's up with that? Well, guess what? We need to understand the cross and we need to understand more than a, a cross 2000 years ago. We need to understand the lamb that died on that cross, wanting us to have him in us in a real way and not just tucked in there. And then oh, I got Jesus in me. Well, he's wanting to see him. He's wanting the manifestation of life and he's wanting the manifestation of death. <clears throat> All right. So. Um, so here we have a prophecy calling for all these nations to submit to Nebuchadnezzar or be destroyed. Why? Because in verse 6 through 8, if they, do, if they do submit, then they will not be carried away captive, including Judah, including the people of God. If you submit to this in a right spirit and you're with me in a certain way, then, you know, you're not, you don't even have to go into captivity. But if you don't, you are definitely going to captivity. And boy, I think this is the one that really lays into them, but we'll, we'll see. Um, um, so uh, if they do not submit, then they will not be carried away captive, but can at least still dwell in their own lands. All right, so here we are, Jeremiah. 27 verse 1. You with me? Okay. <clears throat> In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, 
saying, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them on thy neck. I'm just making sure I'm not in the wrong place yet. <clears throat> um, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of messengers which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah king of Judah. And command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, but my, uh, by my great power and by my outstretched arm have I given it unto whom it seemeth uh, meet unto me, fit to me. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. So here he is. He's landed out here. I'm just, excuse me for checking one more thing here because I have so many notes. Many, many notes. Okay. <clears throat> so, he, so, God is talking to Jeremiah. And he's saying, I need you to go not just to, to Israel, but to all these nations. And I need you to tell them something. I need you to tell them that I've, I've got a guy coming, his name's Nebuchadnezzar, and they're from Babylon, and I want you to submit to them because he's my servant. Okay? And this is going to come up many times. Verse 6 again, And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have I given <clears throat> him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's sons until the very time of uh, his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass, verse 8, and it shall come to pass that <clears throat> the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I consume them by my hand. Okay. Verse 9. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers which speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the, the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out and you should perish. Verse 11, But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. <clears throat> All right. So some of you know the history and you know what happens and you know that Israel, right down to the very end, they will not hear the word of the Lord. And the reason why is because this kind of message of the cross, this kind of message of uh, laying down your life, this kind of message of even if someone's unjust and unrighteous and unfair and, and mean-spirited and everything, you should still lay down your life and manifest the Spirit of Christ because if you do, saith the Lord, I will move in my way that I want to move and either deal with them or bring forth life out of that in some new way because life comes out of death, but if you don't, then you're just you're just another. The term we've been using is evildoer from First Peter class. You're just like they are. They're coming at you and being mean to you, and you're talking back and justifying and being mean to them. <clears throat> and that pro-self thing will really fight that. Well. 
they deserve to die or they deserve to be punished. Why am I being that way? Why am I? See, so much pride, so much, so little. Not, it's not even just about so much pride and pro self. It's about so much lack of the true Christ that wants to live in us. Our doctrines can be so good and our our insides so bad. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can I get an amen out there? Okay, good. Thanks. Especially that one that really went, amen. <clears throat> um, and uh, so, so that's, that's where they stand. Um, let's see. So let me read some more notes to up to the next verse here. Uh, that was verse 11. Um, as we shall see later, there are verses set forth to declare to Judah and all surrounding nations that they are to submit to Babylon because the, their king is God's hand and not just a random attack. And so that is these verses. We, we like Israel, could, cannot discern between what is God moving in our circumstances to get his lamb between that and just bad circumstances or the devil or whatever we 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 can't seem to discern the difference well i can tell you um number one the father always wants his son number two the father never wants us when it comes to this he because because all it is 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 justification and and uh, freaking out and and not being with the Lord and praying to the Lord to take them away when he brought them just like Israel's doing praying to the Lord go oh God take away this this horrible thing this is terrible you know uh, the the king of Babylon this Babylon yuck take them away lord yes you love us you how you want only good for us you know what was that person <laughs> jeremiah for i know the thoughts i have towards thee thoughts of peace da, 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 i can't remember what and, and and give you an expected end anybody ever heard that for i know my thoughts toward you thoughts of peace to give you an expected end but he is telling them that in the midst of the fact that he's going to send them into captivity or he's going to bring Babylon down on their head. And he's saying, he's not saying, I'm going to get you out of that. He's saying, through that, I'm going to do that. If you'll be with me, you know, not just through it generally. Well, God will take care of all this. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, what I act like or what I, what thoughts or, or stuff vomit comes out of my mouth. Um, he's going to take care of me. Well, that it, folks, that is modern day Christianity. And, um, uh, and it is the explanation of so many scriptures and so many books of the Bible, including New Testament books, why they don't understand it or don't even read it. Don't, they don't even take the time to read it. And I'm not speaking of everybody, obviously, but I'm just saying they are, are content to know about 12 or 15 scriptures that you can quote, you know. I mean, one of them is greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, but, you know, is he greater than you? Is he greater than your rebellion? Is he greater than your mouth that you use so much when you shouldn't be using it? Is he greater than your pride that causes you to react all the time? You see what I mean? Anyway, so um, uh, this is all similar to the corridor in 1 Peter. There may be evildoers and they may be bad people. But if you are to fellowship with Jesus in his sufferings, then you will lay down your life without murmuring, fighting back, justifying yourself, or looking to anyone else but your Adonai 
for help or pity. Okay. Now, I mean, how many of us, when we get, you know, you know, it seems like all, all these people are against us or whatever, we want to get with somebody. Well, you know, we want somebody to take us by our hand and pat it. Saying, what are they doing to you? <laughs> well, they're being mean to me and all this stuff. That ain't, there's nothing Jesus in that. We think that even the person patting your hand is of God when that is not really, well, I won't address that anymore until we get to the point. <clears throat> so, um, so let's look at verse 12 now. <clears throat> So this is uh, still Jeremiah. I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Why will you die? This is Jeremiah speaking the word of the Lord. Why will you die, thou and thy people, by the sword and by famine and by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nations that will not serve the king of Babylon. So this is actually Jeremiah speaking to, you know, after he's given the prophecy, he's going to uh, King Zedekiah and saying, this, it, see, in Zedekiah's mind, it's like, yeah, we've got weapons and we've got, you know, gather the people out and stand tall above them and say, we're going to take them. And everybody goes, yeah, you know, Jeremiah's going, this is just all a bunch of bluster. You're, you're not only going to win, you're going to die. Why? Why will you die, thou and thy people, by the sword and by famine, by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Why will you? This is not God now. This is a human being pleading. Look, I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord. You know, uh, it's more than Jesus uh, loves us. <laughs> it's, it's the love of God constrains us that we thus judge that, that one died for all, then we're all dead. <clears throat> dead to our flesh. The flesh is supposed to be dead. Anybody know that? You know, the flesh is not, you know, the old nature, all that's supposed to be dead. Why is it always popping up? Why is there always this stuff that is so contrary to the Lord? Well, the answer is we need the Lord on a deeper plane. We need him now. It's no longer time to fool around. It is time to go after him and let him shake everything that can be shook see you don't you don't hear that prayer a lot except for we christians pray lord you know come get this world and shake everything that can be shook no <laughs> come to us and shake everything that can be shook so that what can't be shook remains there's a lot of stuff needs to be shook out of us off of us however you want to word that <clears throat> Um, verse uh, 14, <clears throat> Therefore hearken not <clears throat> to the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord. So, so there it is. Um, You know, I mean, I hate to put it this way, but that would mean, that would mean <clears throat> that times when we or the pastor of that church or whatever, when God is trying to deal with his people, Baptist, Methodist, interdenominational, uh, non-denominational, doesn't matter. If he's trying to deal with us concerning his son, he's not just saying, well, they're Baptists, so they don't really count. I'm just going to go over there to new creation or something like that. No, no. he's trying to deal with everybody, especially those who are called by his name. 
He's trying to deal with them so that if they, the pastor there, or you, or me, if if um, um, we are, let's see if I can read that. Let's see. We're in a situation, I'm not reading my notes, I'm trying to remember what the scripture was I was looking at. We're in a situation where God, the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, wants His Son and has decided, I'm going to deal with you in this way. You, I, I have blessed you. I have, I have uh, saved you from so many circumstances. It's time you get with me where I'm at inst instead of you always praying me down where you're at in your circumstance. Come up here. Book of Revelation. Real early. Come up here. And what do you see when you get up there? The Lamb enthroned and the people saying, that, now that's worthy. So, if we're, when he's trying to do that, uh, listening to a voice in our head, or listen to the pastor pumping everybody up, saying, we shall not serve the king of Babylon, For they prophesy a lie unto you, for I have not sent them, saith the Lord. That means we're lying, the pastor's lying, the anybody that totally just has a you know, you know it's like it's like a, a, a band aid fits all. Okay, you know, uh, well if uh, if the devil's attacking the church, we're going to use this band aid. I rebuke you. If um, if uh, somebody disagrees with me, I'm going to use this band this band aid. I rebuke you. You know, it's like, you know, we got cancer. Let me go. Well, here, let me put a band aid on that. No, there are times. Okay, life is full of circumstances. Life is full of trials. There's all kind of stuff that happens. But there's a God who is overseeing all of it. And we need to find his mind in those things. And we need to be prepared to join with him in his spirit and give him back something. Give him his son. Like God said to Moses going down to Egypt, tell them, let my firstborn son go. You know, and God's saying that to us. He put the firstborn in us. Let the let that firstborn son go. Quit holding him back. You're, you're like Pharaoh. You got him all in bondage on the inside of you, and your land is like Egypt. You only let him out when you you got a need or something in the flesh, in this life. And when you're always worrying about this or that. Well, look at this and look at that. Or get him, Jesus, like he's some sort of service dog or something like that. Attack dog. Uh, that, but we gotta, we got to put him back on the chain and lock him up in there and not let him have his agenda. <clears throat> uh, for I have not sent them, saith the Lord, yet... They prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive them out, that I might drive you out, and that ye might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. Okay, <clears throat> so from verses, that's verses 12 to 15, yes, 12 to 15, Jeremiah speaks to the king of Judah. He shares the same. If you will learn to submit in the right spirit to unjust treatment, though they are unfair uh, and evil and not directly of God's spirit, then he will let them remain in the land. But if they resist that, then they will lose everything and will die. Okay, <clears throat> so in, in, in uh, Israel's mind and in Zedekiah's mind, um, we're not resisting God. We're not, this guy's going to take us to a heathen land. Well, God said that's what he wants. You know, if you're, if you need to go into captivity, 
you're too free with being able to think that you're doing good because you go to a church or you tithe or you do this or that. You need to be put in captivity in a situation where you cry out to God and go, oh my God, this, you know, I need you. And he says, oh, and he can talk to you without you popping out your little sayings and Christian you know, you know, little signs all over your house and go that, or you know, you know what I'm saying. The, the things that Christians do, and and um, but put us in a situation where I really do need you, okay? And then he can talk to you and say, "Well, here's the deal. You don't need me in the way you think you do. You need me in the way I want to be with you, and I want." more importantly, the way I want you to be with me. And we go, huh? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'd like to talk to you about it. And it's going to take about 10 years for your ears to even pop before you can hear it. So here we go. <clears throat> All right. So verse, uh, let's look at verse 16 now. Also I spake, spake to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy unto you a lie. Okay, a lie unto you. Okay, so, so on that first deportation, the king of Babylon came down and he swept up, you know, the best of the people. That was the, the, the honorable men, the people like Daniel and the three Hebrew children and eventually Ezekiel on those deportations. And, the, and they also, the king also took certain vessels from the temple or from the priests. Okay, because as long those are holy vessels, God calls them that. They're holy vessels, um, but um, the priests have no clue what all that means, what it, the true meaning of the things are. They're going through the motions of what everybody else taught them, and all the priests that came before and after, and da 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 da. And this is it, and nobody's going, Lord, I really want to know your heart. I don't want to just do, and I don't want to just think that everything that everybody says or everything I think is right. I'd like to plug more into you. And guess what he'll do? Well, well let's start today. <laughs> um, so they've taken some of those vessels, but, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't even take all of them. He didn't take all of them. That's amazing. Well, okay. So, um, um, let's do 16 again. <clears throat> also, I spake to the priests and all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought back again from Babylon. In other words, hey, don't, you know, I mean, who's coming up with this? Crap, excuse my French. <clears throat> Who's coming up with this? You know, well, I want to say something good that'll make the king happy. You know, we want to make the king happy. Let's say what he wants. Let's say it the way he wants it. Let's give him everything he wants the way he wants it. And, you know, all will be well in the kingdom of, <laughs> in the kingdom of Israel. And, and uh, Jeremiah... You know, it's bad. Jeremiah was there, though, see, and he's like, well, no, we want to, we don't want to just give the king what he wants, and we don't want just everybody to be happy because he's happy. We want the Lord, and we want to hear from the Lord, and we want to tune into him above everything else. So, <clears throat> um, for they prophesy a lie unto you. Hearken not unto them, serve the king of Babylon, and live. <laughs> I mean, that's Jeremiah. That. That's a lie. Hearken unto the king of Babylon um, and live. So oh, serve the king of Babylon. Hearken not unto them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Three things. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's let's stop this world involvement that is overshadowing the Lord where we can't even understand him anymore and can't understand his workings in the earth. We just go back to being Zedekiah sitting on our throne trying to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> um, wherefore, wherefore should this city be laid waste? I mean, <clears throat> but if but if they be prophets, and if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. <clears throat> you see that? He's saying, okay, if you guys are really of God, you know, here's what you ought to be praying. Instead of this fake stuff that... Uh, this God's not really serious or he's going to he's going to turn shortly and just go, oh, it's all going to be OK. Really? No, no, no. I know that I've always interceded for you. I know that I've always uh, uh, come back after you failed and after you didn't have the right spirit and after you didn't do what I said and after you didn't care anything about what was in my heart for a long, long, long time. And you're used to me turning and coming back, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Or you're either going to get on board or you're this this that you're familiar with is all going to be gone and you're going to be in captivity see Jeremiah is no fun he's just no fun I'd like to talk to that guy buddy why are you so harsh why do you see everything so people say black and white no, why do you see everything so Jesus? Why do you see everything so lamb-like? What's up with that? You know? <clears throat> so, I love that, though. <laughs> Let, you know, if they're really of God, they need to start praying that the king doesn't come back and take what's left. If you, you know, if you care about anything, start with that. <clears throat> um So, uh, verse 19, For thus saith the Lord uh, of hosts concerning the pillars and concerning the sea. This is talking about the and the bases. This is all the stuff that held the laver and uh, the different things in the uh, temple. The vessels. It was the vessels of, and stuff like that. And uh, <clears throat> so, he's talking about that now. And he says... Uh, the, these vessels that are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king, da 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 And um, verse 19 again, For thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars and concerning the sea and concerning the bases and concerning the, the bases or what they used to get the blood, gather the blood and stuff like that. <clears throat> and concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jer Jerusalem. Verse 21, Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and in the house of Jer uh, in, in that of Jer Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day I visit them, saith the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. All right. So, <clears throat> Um, well, let me just read this. <clears throat> so from verse 16 to 22, he speaks to the priests. Okay, he's speaking to the priests. He's speaking to the ones who ought, they should know who God is. They should know his heart. They should know his mind. They should be with him. For God's sake, they're priests. They're ministers. You, today we call them ministers. They should know him so clearly that, you know, the, they're, the chaos and confusion of life doesn't, it's like, here's how I see Jeremiah. I see all this chaos going on, you know. I mean, Babylon is coming around and they're taking Edom and they're taking this and they're taking that and they've taken two, two boatloads of their stuff already. And, and it's just mass chaos. And Jeremiah is sitting there and it's like there's this 
fog over all of the chaos and it's all of it's down here and he's got his head just above it looking at the Lord. You know, it'd be like if there was a cloud cover so thick that it was just dark and chaos and, and he's got his head up past the clouds. People say, you got your head in the clouds. No, no, no. He's got his head above the clouds so he can see the sun. And he's, look, he's just looking at the Lord. He's just... He's fixated, he's focused, he's, you know, he, he's set. He's like, like Jesus said, uh, that he set his face toward Jerusalem. He set his face, that's talking about going to the cross. He set his face for the cross, you know. <clears throat> so, um, but they are uh, the priests, but they're listening to the prophets who say that the vessels of the temple will be returned shortly. But Jeremiah is saying that they will lose every semblance of what the Lord uh, gave them. But Jeremiah is saying that they will lose every semblance of what he originally gave to them concerning emblems that speak of him and his desire if they don't show forth his spirit under duress. In other words, there will be another deportation with even greater loss to come. Okay, so <clears throat> you probably know that, but basically every vessel uh, that was in that temple and tabernacle had to do with loss and with self-giving and with pouring out. Okay, uh, but to that, to the priest, that's just ritual. They don't even see that. Okay, so you know, think about the vessels. Okay, you got the you've got the altar, and there's a, going to be a sacrifice, and it's going to pour out its life. It's going to give its life on the altar for sinners, for people who don't deserve it. Okay, and uh, then you you've got the the laver and the laver, and I'm not doing this in order, so, uh, but you've got the laver, and the laver is a big basin, a big, uh, it talked about it there, it showed that it's still there, and that thing has been poured into so that it can be poured out for cleansing, okay? It's been poured into, but it doesn't hold it and just say I'm, say I'm honorable. The priests come over and if they have any blemishes or blood stains from killing the sacrifice and then putting it because you know that's got to be a messy deal and then putting it up on the altar and all that stuff you can't go in there with spots and blemishes and so they come over to this clean basin full of uh, that's that's been poured into and that basin as it were pours back out and washes and all of that filth goes into the basin and it bears all of that and then you've got the candlestick and well you've got the altar of incense so the, the altar of incense is incense that is put on this little altar and it's and it's lit now it, it has a certain fragrance and whatever and solid form but fire is put on it and the fire takes away its old form so that it can't show off or say look at me and it releases a sweet fragrance to the Lord and then you have the seven branch candlestick and the priest they don't have electricity in there and they have no other means of lighting in there except the seven branch candlestick and they go in and that candlestick really isn't made of wax it's 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 uh, uh, gold and uh, especially in the uh, <clears throat> temple and it's hollowed out and it's filled with oil and then it has this little wick thing on top <clears throat> so they fill it up with the water so it's filled up but then you you set that thing on fire and it begins to burn out the insides it gives the insides up the candlestick does so the priests can see so they can do what god called them to do it's total loss of its own self in that sense and uh and then you had the the table of showbread over there and it's bread made and everything and the the bread um is is given there it's made it's all this stuff but then it's consumed just like the fire's consumed and the incense is consumed and the sacrifice is consumed it's consumed so that the priest will have strength everything there is as i said self-giving and 
pouring out and and uh, and to these priests they don't see any of that they you know some of you might even be listening to me and go huh <laughs> you know I never never really looked at it like that but that's what it is everything testifies of the lamb of Christ crucified everything does in there God made it that way you know that's what he wants in his temple <laughs> And so the priests are in there, and they're going, no, we're going to protect all of this. And God's saying, there's nothing here that lives to protect itself. Everything in here lives to give itself. Excuse me for getting all riled up, but, but Lord help us. <clears throat> all right. So, what time is it? Oh, my Lord. How does the time go so fast? I really don't understand. Uh, I was going to start at another place, start in, but that's probably a good, good stopping place for us. We want the Lord and we want the Spirit of God to deal with us, and we don't want to just keep going and hearing the next line and the next line and the next line and missing his spirit and missing an opportunity to truly, um, if necessary, repent or if necessary, <clears throat> reach deep down inside of us and say, Lord, I've got to have, I've got to have your son in a real way, in the way that you desire him. Father, I don't want to be like the priests and prophets that are just self-protecting when you will give everything, including that temple. You'll let it be burned to the ground, just like you let your son, as it were, be burned to the ground. But you'll raise it up again. You raised him up again, and you'll raise Christ up out of us again if we'd be willing to take, along, take on your spirit and and if you and if we would be willing to just say i want to be with you where you're at i don't i don't want to just be christian i don't want to just know some deep things and yet live in a way that is just a violation and an abomination at times that just foments out of us and comes rising up out of us to justify or to to strike back at the people that do things against us or to think evil of them instead of being a willing sacrifice for them that Lord maybe you could touch their hearts through our selfless giving like you did through Christ on the cross and you'll do it through Christ in us who will do that who will give but our souls are so stronger than the life of Christ within us and resist such things. And it doesn't sound right to our ears because we've listened too much and too long to too many preachers and prophets and everything that prophesy blessing and greatness and, and success and all of this. Uh, and and there are no lambs. They're just all goats and, and beasts. Father, for those that are <clears throat> launching in to the sharing on the book of Revelation, oh, Father, oh, help them to see. I mean, you said that, Jesus. You, you spoke the whole thing to John and and then you said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Oh, Father, we don't hear. We, because we're, we're so self-consumed, we're so full of pro-self, we're so full of a life down here that we, we, can't, we can't hear. We can't hear you anymore. We've, we've gotten so far in our own twist and turn of what the scriptures mean that would bless and satisfy us and our, our intentional uh, staying away from scriptures that scare us or that um, would ask us to be like the vessels in the temple to give back, to give back to you sweet savors and 
our lives and light for you to minister to us and bread so that you're strengthened instead of always thinking that I need to be strengthened. These are the vessels that served the Lord, served you and, and the priest used not to serve themselves, though they benefited. They used to serve you, Lord. Back then, same. you're the same God you're the same God as back then, except now this is the real deal. And back then it was a shadow. This is the real deal. And why will we not follow him? Why will we not lay into him like John at the Last Supper, leaning over into his bosom and in his heart? Why will we be Judas and walk out and and having having uh, been disobedient to so many things that you've shared with us before and and being rebellious? Literally, we may not call it rebellion, but it it is um, knowing that we will not follow through with what you've told us, and we seem to be okay with that year after year after year. Father, give us ears to hear. But you didn't say, Jesus, I give you ears to hear. Jesus, you said, he that hath the ears to hear, let him hear. Father, as your servant, as your lowly, lowly serving servant, I ask you not for my sake, but for their sake and for your sake, for Jesus' sake, that somehow you would begin to let my words that come from your heart strike a blow in their heart, that they would want you, that they would feel conviction, that they would have something rise in them that says, I don't want this anymore. I don't want it anymore. I want you, Jesus. So, Lindsay, I don't know if you're in any shape there to be able to put on some music, uh, some good music, some of that new stuff, maybe. How about that, that uh, refiner song? Put that on and let let those of you who can, some of you may have children or you may have something burning on the stove or whatever and you can't take a little more time. I would love it if we could just put on some music and just sit before the Lord or, or kneel, man, kneel before the Lord or uh, open our heart. And, uh, and if that was two minutes, then so be it. And if that's um, longer, then so be it. But that um, you could not just hear tonight, but reach your heart. Reach your heart out to Him. Even if you don't know what to say, just tell Him. Just tell Him. I don't know what to say. I really don't. I, I love you. I really want you, but I don't really want you. So what, do you, what can you do with that, Lord? Well, he'll hear that. He'll hear those prayers. I think he loves those prayers more than, you know, the ones that sound so self-righteous as if we've got it together. And just to show you this, this was at the gathering last time we were all there.